No, very good afternoon to you with the What Matters program with myself, John Prendergast. I'm in the studios of Lear Media TV here in Limerick City. And as the slogan goes, wherever you are, we're there with you as well, which is marvellous. And I want to firstly start off the program today by wishing a very good viewer and a great follower of mine, Carmel Renahan who has celebrated her birthday recently. Carmel, I hope you and your family are doing great. Thank you so much indeed for your great support. You're always sending me best wishes. So thank you so much and it's greatly appreciated. And I hope you have some of the birthday cake left. If you don't, we're all in trouble. Now, also I want to say a very special hello to a very good colleague, uh, Jeff Hunt, who is doing absolutely tremendous work in relation to the education and wildlife and all of that, and our biodiversity, which is so important, which leads me in then to the COP26 in Glasgow, which is concluding today and are tearing their hair out lit literally to try and come to some form of agreement. I have a big personal problem with this, and it's very simply this. We are an island nation of 4.9, 5.1 million people maximum. So how in the name of God can our carbon emissions be so disastrous worldwide or planetary wise that all of these restrictions have to be imposed? For instance, here's a stupid one brought in by the three party government. One, we eliminate the production of peat in this country and yet we're importing it. So I don't see the logic of that. Secondly, we, we see then that the electricity prices, phone prices, everything has shot up massively. Now we're heading for the highest inflation rate in Europe, 5.1%. That is a very, very serious situation. So no matter who, in what media circles that you listen to or read about, nobody can actually object to the fact that the cost of living in this country is gone beyond any form of level of sanity. It's an absolute disgrace, folks. Absolutely an absolute disgrace. And until people put their foot down, I can't understand with all these carbon levies and all of these things that are going on and on and onto your bills and onto your bills and onto your bills, how come then the cost of supplying electricity, uh, your private health care, everything is just going up, 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 and yet your income is not going up, up, up to match it. So we are in for a very, very hard knock uh, with this scenario in this country. And I think that the people like Eamon Ryan of the Green Party need to cop on themselves and actually look after the Irish people. How in the name of God can you expect people to continually pay high electricity bills, high private health care, all of the carbon levies, all of the levies onto an insurance policy, car insurance policy, all of the additions, the additions and the additions. I heard one case, it actually shows you how stupid and ridiculous this country has gone with the present government. A person used on a meter, I think it was something like 80 or 50 electricity. And their bill with all the additions and all the VATs came to 68 euro now something lads we're being conned in this country it's as simple as that conned left right and center and it's about time that people all the the, the agencies out there all the unions need to actually gather together and say to the government look this is not on i mean a measly pension of 248 a week has now risen by five euro how in the sweet divine god are people expected to make ends meet, pay their bills, pay their fuel costs, etc.? It's it's not, it's a no-brainer. It's going to fall flat on its face. And yet we're hearing about um, the Green Party going on and on and on about A, B, and C, and it's absolute nonsense. And we're being sold as pig in a poke that, uh, oh, you know, we're going to aim for a million cars and an electric. That's... We're a small island nation of 5.1 million people alone. So I think a step back and more generosity 
a more understanding for our farming and industrial community needs to be brought in uh, in this. Certainly reduce carbon emissions. We all know that climate change is happening. It is. Now, whether it's man-made or whether it's a natural cycle, I don't know. There are many debates on that and we just have to actually just make up our own minds. But this idea of shoving electric cars on people, these, these grants for the SEAI are from them to upgrade and retro, retrofit your home. Let me tell you just a catch on that when I looked into it. And it's very simply this, to get your grant from the SEAI, you have to spend upwards of 40,000. So remember folks, that's coming down the line and you need to actually be very, very much aware of what you see in these false advertisements. You will have to spend thousands of euro. And I admire Claire Byrne of RTE today. She's actually tackling this issue head on and fair play to her because I don't listen that much to RTE uh, jargon, but Claire Byrne seems to be coming out in favor of the cost of the ordinary Irish people. And I think that is a good point. So we need to use our national media platforms, our online radio systems like what we have here, and is to push that home to our elected representatives. We are not going to be rolled over on this. Simple as that. We are not going to be rolled over very, very much. I think it's an absolute, absolute disgrace that we are paying nearly the highest electricity and energy costs in Europe. Well, I mean, we, we must be. We must be gone bean men. We must be little leprechauns to put up with this and to put up with a pension increase of five euro a week and say, lads, go away. Look, aren't we great giving you this? The government are great all these years of actually telling you, oh, the pension increase has cost so much million in the budget. When you wheeze it down into um, what it means per household, you wouldn't actually, you know what, folks, you wouldn't even buy a pint of stout or beer or even a small whiskey for it. So there you are. That's what it's worth today. It's an absolute disgrace. We have been conned left, right and centre. And on top of that now, this green debate is obnoxious. It is ridiculous. And it's another con job on the Irish people. There's my personal feeling. I'm speaking on my own personal behalf. I'm not speaking on behalf of Lear or any of them, but I am saying, be careful, folks, because it's it's an absolute disgrace what is going on and what has been done to us. So a lot of people now are calling it the cop con <laughs> 26. There's always some smart people out there that are ready. But the younger generation like uh, Therma Thurnberg and all of those great people across Europe and in Ireland, and I'll be interviewing a young lady again uh, next week. And we'll be talking about that very thing. They're able to analyze what means and what goes between each sentence. And the blah, 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 and the listening and the hype. And Eamon Ryan and his gang coming home from Glasgow and saying, look at us, we have a blueprint for saving the planet. It's a great load of bull. And that is my impression i'm speaking directly to you don't believe a word of it it is there just to satisfy a b and c simple as that so um what i'm going to say to you also is is this um i want to say a very special hello to very good friends of mine that have become very good friends of mine in kilkenny and uh, we're talking to dan brennan and all his family uh tom seven and also Nelly uh, Campion, because these people have gone through the mill of absolute scandalous behavior by the EPA and by the state bodies. And it was revealed to me about a year, a year, a year and a half ago on my interviews with these great people, but more has happened since, more has actually been uncovered since. And when you see the duplicity of these organizations not doing their job and helping the farmers and helping the people on the ground, you will begin to see what I've been saying for the last four or five years. 
read between the headlines, look at what is going on. You're intelligent people out there. You can actually do this and assimilate the information for yourself. And I just, beggars belief what actually is going on. The cover up, the lack of transparency is unreal. And when certain politicians of all parties are asked to help, they go the other direction. Why? Well, we all know why. They don't want to upset the gravy train, the apple tart, and whatever. I was out in Rakeel yesterday, or not yesterday, the other day, pardon me, and I was with uh, Seamus Hogan and um, Peter Donovan and great people out there, marvellous people, community people. And the AIB is just shutting and there's no way that they're, they're, they, they can get a banking service there for a marvellous town of Rathkeel and surrounding areas. And it just, again, remember, folks, you and I bailed out the banks for billions and billions in 2008. The repercussions of which we are all still dealing in housing prices, rentals going through the roof that people imagine a two bedroom flat now is costing the bones of 1800 to 2000 a month that is abnormal people are not earning that people can hardly work one job never mind three or four jobs so there's something wrong with the system do we need here's my question do we need a dictatorship or do we need do we need a council of state to railroad this rotten behavior towards the ordinary man, woman, and child in this country. I mean, over the decades, my friend Billy McGuire and John Robertson, Chris Fogarty in America, they have actually all said what has been airbrushed historically under the carpet was not envisaged or sacrificed for by Eamon de Valera. Michael Collins, the IRB, all of those great people, men, men and women that sacrificed their time and their life for a great cause in this country. And seemingly in the last couple of decades, we've had the nod and the wink, the cronyism, um, the, uh, the abnormal, obnoxious, immoral salaries, expenses of our sitting TDs, our president, earns more than the President of the United States. We have a Tarnishta and a Tisha that simply do not care about, and the banking system, about the ordinary man, woman, and child in the street. They don't. It's tampering with a system. And then they get RTE out and they get Virgin Media and all of those, and they're saying, oh, look at us, we are great. We brought in this, we brought in that. At the end of the day, it's only a few pence in the pocket. Layman's language, that's what I use. And it is just, it's just absolutely obnoxious what is actually going on in this country. And my worry is, folks, very simply this. We're going to be in for a very hard economic winter and probably spring into next year. And I'm sick of these economic reporters saying, you know, that um, the, the statistics are up and they're, you know, everything is fine and growth rate is at 5% and going to be more next year in the name of the fine God. Will these people put on absolutely some semblance of normality and intelligence and stop talking a load of bull, which they are, because that does not relate to the ordinary man, woman and child in the street or children going to school you know, the teachers in school, everyone else trying to make ends meet, pay their bills. It's, it's just absolutely crazy. I met two people in Limerick and I asked them, and I know them personally, so I know the information I'm getting is absolutely accurate. And they said that they earn uh, 1,900 euros a month. The other person was a bit less. Uh, that's after tax by the time they have their mortgage paid, their car loan paid, their crash costs paid, their fuel bills paid, their food bills paid. Would you believe it, folks? There's about 20 euro left per month after everything just to exist. Now, can somebody out there tell me that this is living? 
that this is living in Ireland in the 21st century. So something is very seriously wrong with our system of governance. It's, 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 it's rotten to the core. Now, if I'm going to be castigated about bringing down the reputation of our uh, politicians, our president, our political system, our state body system, I don't care. I am actually watching this every single day of the week. And I see people struggling. They're contacting me. John, will you say this? Will you say that? Nobody's listening to these people. These people are the votes for the next election. And I can tell you, there was going to be a terrible, terrible um, electoral shock after the next election. It could be next year, the year after. And all we have is the Taoiseach trying to outdo the Taoiseach. The Taoiseach trying to outdo the Taoiseach. And podiums. And it's an absolute, it's an absolute disgrace. A total, total disgrace for a small island nation of 5.1 million people, Max. I, I don't know where we're going to end. There's no transparency. We have no proper media there that will hold people to account. We have the Joe Duffy's, we have the Katie Hannans, hopefully the Claire Barnes will come in on top of this and actually start asking the pertinent questions and driving home the message. Enough is enough. We are not putting up with this any longer. And we want change. People need more money in their pockets. It's as simple as that. Not promises, not tinkering with welfare, not tinkering with fuel allowance, not tinkering a couple of bob here, insulting the Irish people. Let me tell you, people on a pension have worked hard all their lives, paid their taxes, and are quite entitled to a living allowance pension, contributory or non-contributory. And that is it. People that have two pensions coming in, well done to them. Then I know pro rata, the state pension is reduced, but it shouldn't be there until everyone else is actually looked after. Children going to school, the costs of school books, the cost of feeding them. Now I know, and I've been told this, I've checked it out. Certain teachers in certain parts of the country are secretly making sandwiches and lunches for pupils in the school that can't afford it, whose parents can't afford it. Now, this has got to stop. And it's up to you and to me to get that message out there. And I want to say a very special thanks to all of our listeners and followers on my own program, What Matters, uh, at home and abroad. And you have made it what it is. And I'm delighted to say that I have a new associate now who's going to, well, look after everything in a proper fashion and is going to bring my own What Matters program to a new level where there would be greater access um, to for the people to express their views in the 26 and 32 counties. Really looking forward uh, to that. So just to uh, conclude, I would ask people a number of things, please. The animal welfare situation is not great in this city or county. And within the county itself, we need a very active animal welfare system. And now I know Limerick Animal Welfare are uh, certainly very active in what they do, but the Limerick Society of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals um, needs to be uplifted, upgraded, and do their great work under Noel Shinners. And a very good afternoon to you, Noel, and I hope you're keeping well and well and your family. But I know Noel is very anxious to get this up and running. He will be recognized by the relevant department because of his years of experience of animal welfare. And that man, to this day, up to a few weeks ago when I met him out at his home, is actually continually looking after animals and trying to get them homed. So one thing, folks, you could do, please. We're approaching this materialistic, um, often crazy, stupid, materialistic season of Christmas. And 
a lot of people with the very best of intentions will buy pups, kittens, whatever. I would ask you not to, please, because they are being dumped. I've heard stories last year during COVID, the year before, the year before, and the year before, where cars have been driven up to Curra Chase or other woodlands around the county, and the pups and kittens are being dropped off. Now, that is abject cruelty. Can you look? Can you, can you face a pup or a kitten straight in the face and see the fear and the anguish and the fright of that poor defenseless animal? And you can actually walk away and drive away. It's sinful. It's wrong. It's a mortal sin. If you are in a situation where you have an animal at home that through pressures of the economy or monies or work, uh, please ring up the relevant Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals or, or any of the dog trusts, and they would gladly take the animal from you, look after them and rehome them. And surely with God, if you have any heart or feelings, you would be actually able to feel that and get that done. It's only a phone call away. Please, 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 I'm begging of you, do not buy an animal of any description this Christmas. Wait until this silly season is over. Wait until the kids go back to school or whatever the holidays are over and just see how you feel then. Then make a proper rational decision because I'm seeing it. There's too many lost. It's, it's awful to see the cruelty to animals in this country. Dreadful. So we need people like uh, Noel Shinners and all other great people whom I'm hoping to get to connect with other people that this Limerick Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals can actually be uh, upgraded and get on the road. This is so essential. Now, as you know, I'm coming up to the end of my, my speech. <laughs> as they say, don't worry, I'm not going into politics and I'm not going for presidency. Don't worry about that. You're all saved. But in relation to the increasing numbers of the COVID case, I would ask people, I have a personal problem wearing a mask because of my, my lungs. That's it. I wash my hands, I keep my distance. And as you know, when I'm out interviewing, um, it's just I keep my distance and I'm not seen on the camera for that reason, not in keeping 10 feet away from the guests of the program. So I just want to ask people out there that if we do not continue to wash our hands or abide by the normal sanitation requirements and um, we're in trouble this Christmas and more restrictions could be placed on us now we don't want that we want kids going back to school because their mental health has been affected for the last 18 months when we want people to go back to work or work remotely and we want people to have a normal type of life we can't do this when all of this type of scenario of figures and figures are going up and all of that. I met a number of people and this folks is where I get all my information. I talk to people, they tell me what, what, what is real for them. That is my uh, meaning of proper broadcasting media is those stories. What they tell me, they can't wear masks and uh, they're, they're seeing uh, breaches of codes of practice in certain areas of hospitality. But I know in the hospitality people that I know, they're taking the protocols extremely serious and that everyone going in there has to produce a mobile number, name and address or a COVID certificate. And I've come across that every time I go in for a coffee to Limerick or city or county Limerick, that is being done. Now you know I love my coffee, by the way. Now, I would ask people to please, please make an effort, a special effort for the next couple of weeks that we might get back to 50% normality of sharing Christmas, no matter what way you share it, just to have a slight bit of normality. Because if the figures continue to rise or continue as they are, there's what, 3,000 a day average, so that's 21,000 a week. And then we have the hundreds inside in the... Um, the hospital systems with COVID or related COVID, and then ICU is going up. So please remember folks that if you want to break the rules, remember one thing, please. 
it is this. Whether you believe in the vaccine or disagree with the vaccine or disagree with the government or NEFIT, remember one thing, the non-COVID treatments of cancer, hip replacements, arthritic care, all of that are being pushed away, are being pushed back. No fault to the HSE, no fault to the marvelous workers and the carers and the doctors and the nurses out there, nothing to do with them. But I'm only saying that if we don't control the input of patients into hospital, we are going to continue to see the waiting list going up, which is uh, 910,000 up to today. And it's going upwards because the doctors and the nurses and surgeons cannot treat um, the actual existing patients for non-COVID care. So no matter whether you agree or disagree with vaccine or whatever conspiracy theory you have or objections to the government, I would ask you, please bear in mind that people need cancer care. They need hip replacements. They need the arthritic care. They need um, all the other very serious illnesses and chronic diseases. They have to actually uh, get that. And that's being put under pressure. So let's all bear that in, in mind. I'm not saying the government handled or mishandled. One aspect that they disgracefully handled and they misplaced uh, your money and mine, taxpayers' money, by paying PUP payment without a proper means test and without people saying, uh, okay, we give you so much per week. We're paying hundreds every week. Men and women, Toby, they didn't want to work. This was a gravy train. This was a gravy train. So that is where the government made a very, very serious mistake. Now, there's a lot of talk. I go with this. And it says that um, Mr. Harris, the former Minister for Health, is now a millionaire. And there's a lot of gripe happening through the media on that. And that's his own business. But if TDs are going to be investors, landlords and if they're going to um, carry on in that way then they shouldn't be in politics they should be businessmen or businesswomen get out of politics leave it up to the men and women who deserve the salary and work for the people and um, that's all I'm, I'm going i'm going to say um, just on other news uh, the the uh, wikipedia gentleman uh, assange has been given permission to marry in a uk prison now, when you look actually at the, the background to this, it certainly feels, in my, my view, that uh, civil rights, personal rights, have actually been uh, breached here. And this is very, very important going forward that we really, really uh, know what is in the background to these headlines and people's personal rights. And if Mr. Assange wanted to publish certain information, maybe it wasn't right if it was a breach of national security where human lives are important. But if it's his right to actually talk to people in another way, that should be done and should be allowed. So we just have to wait and see. Now, I just notice here as well, a non-alcoholic nightclub launching in County Kerry. Great news. Yep, for people that want to go have a non-alcoholic drink and a nightclub and... Uh, whatever else uh, there, um, I think that's a great idea. And we wish them the very, very best of well, uh, very, very best of luck. The man is critical with serious head injuries in Dublin. Neffet recommends twice weekly antigen testing and 10 EU nations causing very high concern over COVID. We're now coming up to the 10, by the way, as well. So we just have to be careful. And, you know, if, if, if NEF had recommended to the government more restrictions over Christmas, I tell you, we're in trouble. Uh, I mean, people will be out on the streets and they will be protesting. So I think the government and politicians are very much aware of that. And uh, also, just to conclude for the fifth time, um, a 14-year-old uh, person is the youngest COVID death in Ireland, that was breaking news on the 12th, the 11th of November. Now, that is very, very sad. Now, I spoke at length to Mike Pott as well, whom I do a lot of current affair programs with, and he has been saying there are some indications there of a very um, 
unorthodox procedure where people are not dying of COVID and it's COVID on the death cert. So, you know, this now is beginning to become, oh, look, put it down to COVID, put it down to COVID, which is grossly inaccurate, grossly unfair to the family. And I think uh, the minister needs to investigate this if there's any fact or truth in it as well. So tomorrow I am down in the Kerry Writer Centre in Stone County Kerry. And I'll be interviewing there talking to uh, Gabriel Fitzmaurice and Jimmy Dean. And we're looking at a very, very old um, piece of recording and, and prose called The Gift of Ink. And it includes uh, writings there from uh, Eamon Keane, John B. Keynes and all of that. It's, it's, it's a fascinating. I've heard it numerous times before, and I know that you're going to enjoy it as, as, as well. So thank you indeed. And again, thank you so much for all of your great support to uh, the outside broadcasts, which I'm doing, which have grown substantially over the last number of years. And it's only done, and it's only down to uh, what you, the great people out there at home and abroad have done. Special regards to Billy McGuire, Chris, uh, Chris Fogarty in New York, uh, John Robertson in Dublin, and all of you out there. Play safe. Have a great weekend, but do take care. Wash your hands. Keep your distance. And where you can, if you can manage it, wear your masks. But I'm finding it very difficult, but I try to when I'm among people as well. So that's it from myself, John Prendergast, on What Matters Programme here in Dear Media TV. Until we meet again in studio here in a few days' time, uh, do keep your support coming from my outside broadcast, What Matters page, What Matters Programme with John Prendergast. It's all there for you. Thank you again. Stay safe. Gurning me the market. Okay,